So in this tutorial I'm going to show you one method of going from 3ds Max to Mudbox adding paint colors and textures in Mudbox and then re-importing that model into 3ds Max for rendering. So I just have this kind of basic uh, model here and you'll notice on this model I created it by um, doing a few things and then adding symmetry and you want to make sure that when you add symmetry um, you'll have this issue once in a while where, ha where you'll have floating vertices so you make sure you want to fix those um, before you go into Mudbox. So to do so you can add an edit poly modifier go to your vertex sub-object level and then just find those floating vertices. So for example uh, right here I have one where the, the lines don't connect outward and you can kind of see this odd crease in the form and so that is one of the ones you'll want to remove like this is a good one and this one is a bad one because it's not connected on the sides so to remove that you just select it hit remove and then just go through your form and make sure you don't have any more of those it looks like that's the only one I have in this particular form if you have those and you bring in a mud box you'll have an issue adding paint and texture so you might have to bring it back in a or come back into 3d max and just make sure everything's cleaned up so once it's cleaned up, you can export it. So go to File, Export Selection, and then make sure you're using an FBX file format. And then hit, hit Save. And then make sure for the current preset, you're using um, Autodesk Mudbox as the preset, and then say OK. Once you've done that, you can bring your form into Mudbox. And you'll probably get this pop-up which says, um, UVs are not created. So one thing you can do is create those UVs directly in Mudbox. I'll say keep all by going to UV WMAP and hit create UVs. Or the other way you can do it is to go back into Max and add an unwrap UVW modifier, unwrap UVW modifier before you bring it into Mudbox. And I recommend doing this because um, it's just kind of a good practice to be in um, and if you're adding other textures within Max it's a little easier this way but either way will work. Um, in this case we're going to add the unwrap UVW modifier and then once you do that you want to open the UV editor and then in the UV editor if you kind of zoom out here you want to make sure all your tiles are in this UV space and right now my, my geometry is way out here so to get it in there and unflatten it you have to hit all the polygons select all the polygons by hitting this button select your polygons and then you need to unfold them into the UV space so to do that you go to mapping and you can use any of these three types I'm gonna start with flatten mapping and then just hit OK and you'll see it automatically kind of breaks them up, unfolds them, and puts them within this one UV tile. And you have to have this if you're going to paint or add texture to the geometry. So once you've done that, you can close it, you can get out of that sub-object level, um, and you're ready to export. So I'll try this again. File, Export, Export Selection. Let's rename this. FBX File Format. Uh, make sure the preset's Mudbox. OK and back in Mudbox I'll go ahead and uh, select this model delete it and then let's reopen that new one that I just sent so here's the new file you will see there are no errors because the UVs are all set up so it's ready to go um, one thing you will notice is I, I have a surface here that's really dark and that's because the default material doesn't uh, show incandescence on the back side. So one thing you can do, first of all, if you don't see that, you have to right click out in your scene here and make sure you have show both sides selected. And you can also see, I see the subdivisions on the surface. You want to make sure you have wireframe selected so you can see that subdivision. You can also turn on or off the overall grid if you want to. Um, okay, so what we do is we um, go over here to object list, select the default material, and then under incandescence, you could change this from black to a brighter color, like if I go over here, and then you can start to see the subdivision on that surface and see the surface a little better on the back side. So that's just kind of nice if you're getting that issue. So then say done, and you are ready to paint. One thing to note um, when you're painting on a texture is, um, or on a model, is that you want to use a high pixelation of your geometry or, or very subdivided geometry because it'll paint per pixel. So if you go up here to mesh, you can add new subdivision levels. And if I add one, you can see that it begins to subdivide the geometry with each level that I add. So you can see over here on the right, under object list, if you open up your object, all of the levels you're creating, and then each time it sort of gets double 
um, the size of the of the number of faces before. So you're kind of really increasing the geometry, but it'll produce a smoother um, uh, pattern when you're painting or especially if you're starting to add textures you'll want to have a high resolution mesh it also is very good for sculpting you can sculpt or paint at different levels within your geometry so I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a few more let's go down to like five um, that seems pretty good and then let's start painting so to start painting you go to the layers menu and we're not sculpting we're painting so make sure that's selected and then you want to select a paint tool from down here. So I'm going to select paintbrush, which is your basic kind of generic brush. And um, right now I have stamp image on. I'm going to turn that off for now and just paint with a color. So whenever you select one of these uh, paint tools, you'll get the options on the right here. So the options are the color. So let's go with, uh, I don't know, I'll choose kind of a, a deep purple. And then you can also choose the size of the brush and the strength of the brush. I'm going to uh, paint this with uh, all purple to start with and then I'll add more detail as I go. So I'll use a big paintbrush and as soon as I start to paint this pop-up will show up and it's going to ask you to form a new paint layer with a size. Make sure you're using a high resolution image. I'm going to go with 4096 and that's a pixel size. So you can imagine if you're rendering like a 24 inch by 36 inch image but you're using a super low res uh, uh, texture map on the geometry it's going to render low res no matter how big of an image you render so you want to make sure you're using high resolution images whenever you're um, planning on rendering a high resolution or a, high, a big scale rendering so I'm going to use 4096 you can even go bigger if you want to obviously file size increases increases as you increase this number so I'll start with 4096 and then you can choose the channel option. So right now, these are the different map layers that, that are going to be in the material in 3ds Max. Diffuse is the general color or pattern, but you can also paint directly with opacity. So if you wanted to make a perforated surface, you could actually just choose opacity channel and then paint that perforation onto the surface. You can also paint with bump maps or you know glossiness. So let's start with diffuse. Say OK. And then you should be ready to start painting. So I'm just going to paint over the surface here. Uh, just kind of make sure everything's covered, mostly. All right, and you'll notice I have a paint layer over here. So if you want to actually start painting on different layers, um, you can uh, choose. You can choose this button here, which creates a new layer. So I'll do another diffuse layer and say OK, and I'll change the color over here. Let's go with like a, say like a bright greenish color. And in this case, you can either, uh, maybe I'll choose a smaller size here so I can start to paint with a, a smaller brush. Uh, maybe I'll paint in this valley here. And I could use other tools if I want. want. Right now I'm just using the paintbrush, but you could project images onto a surface. You could try these, you know, airbrush. I really like this blur tool once I paint. So if you hit the blur tool to kind of blend. Uh, between different colors or different patterns that you've done so it's it's sort of nice to like smooth out the um, the textures a little bit on the form um, you can also use different stamps or stencils so I'll go ahead and create a new layer we'll use diffuse again um, and let's use a stencil this time so I'll just select this first stencil here you could select any of these stencils and basically project uh, using that stencil pattern onto the surface so if I choose this first one you can also scale these up you see over here on the right so if I hit S right mouse button I could scale it up or down depending on the size of the pattern I want to paint and you can also on the right hit use tiles and it'll sort of tile it across the scene so if I choose a new color let's go with a paintbrush let's choose maybe like a light uh, aqua I can then start painting that texture directly onto the surface. And if I want this to be exactly right there, I can sort of paint that right there onto the surface. Um, you can also turn that off and select stamp. I'll make a new paint layer. Um, and on this one, we can use a stamp. So a stamp is sort of like a stencil. Instead of projecting through it, you're kind of stamping it onto the surface. So in this case, let's, uh, let's just kind of try one of these here. Let's check a new color. Let's go with like a bright uh, kind of gold. Um, and then you can see you can like paint that uh, pattern directly on the surface. So that's another way to start adding paint or, or pattern. And you can, um, if you select this little arrow here, you can add stamps that you find online. You can create your own stamps. Uh, and the same goes for stencil. So once you're done here, you're ready to export. Um, 
I'm going to export this as a high resolution. So I'm going to export this at the, at the level five here um, and see what that does. Uh, later, we'll go over another tutorial where you can export the normal map and, and kind of fake the, the denser tessellation of the surface. But for now, we'll just go ahead and export it as it is. So to do so, you just right click, select model, and then go file, um, export selection. Let's rename this. Make sure it's FBX file format. Uh, and then once you go back into Max, um, you can import that geometry. So I'm going to go File, Import, Import, find my X FBX. Make sure it's Autodesk Media and Entertainment is the preset. Say OK. And then you'll notice, oh, one thing I didn't do there is I didn't change the name of the form, so it wanted to just replace this form. So actually, if I want to, um, which is fine, it, you'll notice if you go into the materials now, you can actually see your material in there. But for now, let's, um, let's actually rename this one. So I'll just add some numbers there. And now I'll re-import that, that model so it's not trying to replace the exact same geometry there. And you'll see this time, it'll put the mud box geometry and the original geometry. So I'll go ahead and select this original geometry and hide this. You can see the mud box geometry. I'll turn off my edge faces so you can see the pattern there a little better. Um, but that's the basic form. So if you want to render this now, you can hit render. But uh, first thing I would do is go into your material editor. It's also a good uh, habit just to go ahead and select that and add the UVW map, unwrap UVW map modifier to it. It should automatically pick up the UV maps from your original form. Uh, but go ahead and add that. It's a good habit to get into. And then when you go in here, you can see the material is brought in with the geometry. So if you double click on that, um, for this particular material, I'm just using a diffuse color and a reflection. And um, it's using a default material. The one thing you'll want to do before you start rendering in V-Ray is create a new V-Ray material. So I'll just go up here to uh, V-Ray material, double click on that. And instead of using a default material, it's just better to use a V-Ray material. So wherever these maps plug in, you just want to plug those in over here to the V-Ray one. So diffuse for that, reflection for this one. Um, reflect map and then if you have any other maps like if you did opacity for example or glossiness you could plug those in and over here as well and then once that's done you can just delete that material and use this new V-Ray material. Um, if you double click on the V-Ray material and kind of hover down here you'll notice there's a maps cat category here or maps list and each of these have numbers percentages next to them right now this reflection map is way too bright it's going to be like a mirror so I'll probably want to delete or reduce this down to like 10 or maybe even 5. And you'll have to just test it and render it. But this is really nice. Like if you bring in a bump map, which we'll talk about later, um, you could really increase that bump map just by changing the percentage here. So once all that's set, you should be able to render this. And it should render with all of the maps that you created uh, within Mudbox. Um, one thing that's kind of nice is if I unhide that original form, I can actually apply the same material to that form. Let me hide the uh, mud box geometry there. Um, and it should render the same here. So if I go back to my material editor, by the way, if you double click on this, um, you can hit this little light bulb here with the grid so you can actually see the map and there it is. And so this one will actually render with this low resolution uh, thing here, with the low resolution, but um, high resolution map, but low resolution geometry. So one thing you can always do is select this geometry and add a turbo smooth, you know, if you want to get it a little smoother and a little more like the mud box geometry. And then this should render pretty nicely.